Yeah, good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis so part 1. So, in the last lecture uh, we talked about uh, the various methods for the preparation of beta lactams and also the first total synthesis of penicillins. So, we continue our discussion on the total synthesis of uh, uh, four numbered lactams and this time we will talk about uh, total synthesis of another closely related natural product called thionomycin. And if you look at thionomycin and it has a lot of similarities uh, with uh, penicillin, uh, both, both have this 4 member lactam. Okay. And in the 5 member ring, uh, there is a change, you can see that. Earlier in the 5 member ring, you, will, you would have noticed this is the 5 member ring. Okay. Now that S has come here, the S has come outside the 5 member ring and also in the side chain earlier in penicillin you used to have NH2 and that NH2 is acylated. Okay. But here you what you have is CH3, CHOH. So these are the major changes one can easily notice when you look at the thionomycin core structure with and compare it with penicillin. So, as I mentioned while discussing about penicillin, penicillin actually created real, real uh, you know major effect on the uh, applications of uh, penicillin type natural products for the treatment of bacterial infection. Okay. And after some time the bacteria started developing resistance to the penicillins. That is why the second level of antibiotics were really required to tackle all types of bacterial infection. So, that is how in when in 1970s Merck group, so they disclosed the structure of thionomycin which showed significant antibacterial activities and also it was isolated from the fermentation broths of the soil microorganism called Streptomyces cattleya. Okay, and it showed very good activity against Pseudomonas and beta lactamase producing species. So, this was a second major breakthrough in the antibiotic history and let us see how thionomycin was synthesized uh, by Merck. Initially they did uh, enantioselective synthesis and later uh, they also reported a bulk scale uh, racemic synthesis of thionomycin. First let us look at uh, the enantioselective selective synthesis of thionomycin and their idea was uh, first they want to construct the carbobinum framework at a later stage. The carbobinum framework is the, the bicyclic framework okay, that they wanted to construct at a later stage and then they wanted to you know append cysteamine and hydroxyethyl side chains at preformed ring system. Once the rings are formed, then they can attach these two and initially they wanted to do the enantio specific synthesis. Okay, start with enantio, enantiomerically pure starting material. So, let us see how they proposed the retro synthesis for thionomycin and how they, they went ahead and completed the thionomycin. So, thionomycin, so if you look at this structure, the first retro synthesis involved the cleavage of this bond, CS bond. The idea is this can be introduced through an addition elimination reaction. See for example, if you have a beta keto ester, okay, if you have a beta keto ester, so then one can make the corresponding enol ether, one can make corresponding enol ether or you can make uh, the corresponding vinyl chloride. So then if you treat with this corresponding thiol, it can undergo a 1 4 addition, a conjugate addition followed by elimination. So, that way it is easy to introduce this thiol group. Next, that is a key reaction where he wanted to introduce the C n bond and make the 5 membered ring 
through the carbene insertion ok, C n bond formation through carbene insertion ok. When you talk about carbene insertion obviously the precursor is the corresponding diazo compound. The diazo compound can be easily prepared from the beta keto ester, beta keto ester if you have and then treat with base and then tocyl acide you can easily introduce the diazo compound ok. So that is a precursor for this. So now this is a monocyclic compound and one can easily do it through first you can see here this aldol reaction you generate anion and then do an aldol with uh, acetaldehyde you will introduce the CH3 CHOH the side chain and here this can be made by simple alkylation that is if you have TMS 13 dithione and treat with butyl lithium you can generate anion and that can attack and in a SN2 substitution you can introduce this and this can be obtained the 4 member lactam can be obtained from the corresponding ester and simple lactamization between these two protected amino acids can lead to the lactam and this is nothing but L aspartic acid which is commercially available ok. This can be easily made from the commercially available L aspartic acid. Now let us see how they have accomplished the total synthesis of trinamycin. L aspartic acid the both carboxylic acids were protected as benzyl ether ok. Then the NH2 was protected with the transient protecting group uh, like TMS chloride. Why I am saying transient protecting group is you know uh, there are uh, different types of protecting group. The transient means it is used for one or two steps ok. Labile protecting group just to use it for one or two steps and then cleave it. So the TMS is one such uh, transient protecting group. So now after that you treat with base here now base is uh, tertiary butyl magnesium chloride. So it generates anion and then attacks intramolecularly the carbonyl group of uh, the benzyl ester to form the 4 membered lactam ok. Then once it is done that the TMS group can be easily cleared by treatment with 2 normal HCl. So the 4 membered lactam is formed then the ester group should be reduced selectively in the presence of 4 membered lactam ok. So that is selectively done by reducing with sodium borohydride ethanol to get the primary alcohol the primary alcohol uh, should be converted into the iodide ok. This was done in two steps first convert the primary hydroxyl group into mesylate and followed by Finkelstein reaction you treat this uh, mesylate with sodium iodide in acetone you get the corresponding iodide. Now this NH the amide NH was protected as TBDMS by treating with TBDMS chloride then you take this 2 lithium 2 trimethyl silyl 1 3 dithion you get the corresponding alkylated compound ok. It is a simple SN2 reaction. Then you can generate anion with LDA quench with acetaldehyde so to get the aldol product but you get a mixture 1 is to 1 ok. 1 is to 1 and in this case you see this stereocenter is fixed ok whereas the hydroxy carbon the hydroxyl group attached to carbon there he got mixture 1 is to 1 ok. So what he did he took this mixture and then oxidized ok he took this mixture and oxidized and same thing the same ketone what he did he also got it in one step instead of doing aldol followed by oxidation he took this lactam and then treated with LDA and N acetyl imidazole ok. You treat with LDA and treat with N acetyl imidazole he got the same product ok. Now when he reduced this ketone with K selectride he got 9 is to 1 ratio of the expected product and 1 is the unwanted product unwanted isomer ok. So then he took the major one and then treated with mercury chloride and mercury oxide. So that is to remove this ketal ok. The ketal group was removed 
to get the corresponding ketone as you want acid the TMS group was treated with hydrogen peroxide to get the carbo carboxylic acid ok. So, once you have the carboxylic acid convert into the corresponding imidazole ok. Then you remove this or do a SN2 reaction with para nitro benzyl CO2 CH2 that CH minus it attacks this carbonyl and this imidazole comes out. So, what you get is this compound. So, basically what they have done is to prepare the precursor for making or introducing the diazo compound. For the introduction of diazo compound you need a beta keto ester ok. So, that is what they have done and here R is still the TBDMS group. So, once you have this treat with HCl methanol and treat with uh, paratolamine sulfonyl acide triethylamine. So, HCl methanol removes the TBDMS group then the tosyl acide as I said introduces the diazo group the tosyl acide introduces the diazo group. Now, you treat with dirhodium tetracetate and it forms the carbene and NH insertion immediately takes place to get the 5 membered ring ok. This is a very very interesting method to make the 5 membered ring. But the stereo center is it important? No, because if you look at the natural product thionomycin you have a double bond here is not it. So, that chiral center is not important. So, what you do take the beta keto ester and treat with phosphoryl ok, diphenyl phosphoryl chloride ok that forms the enol phosphate. If you have beta keto ester and then treat with diphenyl phosphoryl chloride it forms the corresponding beta keto. So, corresponding enol phosphate ok. This enol phosphate again as I said it can undergo a 1 4 addition followed by elimination. That addition elimination reaction with this thiol will give you the expected product ok. So, now what is required in the total synthesis of uh, thiromycin you have to remove the para nitro benzyl group without touching the double bond ok. Hydrogenolysis gives the corresponding carboxylic acid and you can see there are two para nitro benzyl one here and one there. So, this will lead to carboxylic acid and here this will also remove the carbon dioxide because that is a protecting group. NH2 is protected as NHCOOPNB. So, when you remove the para nitro benzyl group the carbon dioxide also will go and you will get NH3. So, then that will be in the citronionic form. So, that is how they completed the NNCO specific total synthesis of thionomycin. And then they wanted to develop a scalable method for thionomycin and for that they first they develop a scalamic method that is racemic method for the synthesis of thionomycin. So, what did they do and how did they do? So, they started with this uh, commercially available uh, beta keto ester I can see. So, this one has a two esters is not it. This on treatment with benzylamine ok. So, it can form enamine is not it. So, in the presence of molecular sieves it forms enamine. That enamine when you treat with ketene, when you treat with ketene it can undergo at this position ok. So, it can undergo at this position basically you introduce SCO CH3 ok, N acylation takes place ok. So, I have written the other way other side case 180 degree you have to rotate. So, you will get this compound or uh, you can I can write that structure so that you know you will not uh, get confused because both are same. So, this is uh, uh, NBN then CO CH3 you can see that. So, this I have rotated 180 degree ok. Now, when you reduce this ketone ok, when you reduce this ketone with sodium cyanoboride in the presence of acetic acid ok, 
not only it reduces the ketone but also the enamine portion okay that gives you can see three stereogenic centers okay that fixes of course it's racemic okay so you get the exactly opposite isomer also now if you treat with concentrated hcl if you treat with concentrated hcl so this bond rotates okay this bond rotates so what you will get is what you will get is this one and that will undergo intramolecular cyclization to give this lactone. So, what you got is 6 membered lactone of course the ester also will be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acid ok. Next the benzyl group you do not want it has served its purpose. So, you cleave it under hydrogenolysis condition to get the corresponding amine. Then you open it up open the lactone with benzyl alcohol ok. When you open the benzyl alcohol this is what you get ok. Now, what you need to do you have to make the beta lactam. So, that is normally done with DCC that is dicyclohexyl carbodiamide you get the beta lactam. Then protect both secondary hydroxyl group as well as the beta lactam NH with TBS ok. Then you remove the benzyl group of the ester under hydrogenolysis condition. Then treat with uh, CDI that is carbonyl diimidazole ok you get this compound. Then you treat with meldrums acid ok. So, the meldrums acid what it does it generates an ion here and then attacks this carbonyl and this comes out ok. So, now it is like a triketone ok keto here you have ketone and then you have 2 ester. So, because of stability the ketone will be in the form of enol ok. Once you have this then you treat with para nitro benzyl alcohol. So, the para nitro benzyl alcohol ok it attacks here ok. Then this acetone which is a stable group which will come out ok and this is in the keto form then this carbonyl group attacks. So, what you get is this beta keto ester ok basically you what you get is beta keto ester. So, once you have this then you remove the TBDMS group ok both O protected N protected TBDMS group you remove. Then you take this hydroxyl group you can see this hydroxyl group which is alpha, but in thionomycin it should be beta. So, how one can do either you can oxidize and then reduce it or one can also think about Mitsunobu reaction because by this time this synthesis was started Mitsunobu reaction came into came into place. So, one can use Mitsunobu reaction which is nothing but it will invert the stereocenter. So, the acid which he used was formic acid. So, he got OCHO. Then if you do hydrolysis OCHO gets hydrolyzed and then you get OH. So, now you can see this is the key intermediate is not it? This is the key intermediate in the total synthesis of thionomycin reported by the same group, but that was enantiomer specific this they wanted to do in large quantity. So, what is left is you have to generate the carbon here and then C n bond formation ok. Then the enol ether and then addition of thiol will complete the total synthesis. They also tried intramolecular Mitsunobu reaction ok. So, intramolecular Mitsunobu reaction they tried with formic acid they also tried intramolecular Mitsunobu reaction. When they started with this lactone what they did they just hydrolyzed they hydrolyzed this lactone to carboxylic acid hydroxy carboxylic acid. Then they treated with triphenyl phosphine dead ok. So, that is a mechanism as you know the carboxylic acid first triphenyl phosphine attacks 
the diazo and then the diazo picks up the proton from carboxylic acid and then you form the CO2 minus. Now this OH will attack the triphenylphosphine and you get uh, this intermediate that is OPPH3 and then the carboxylic acid will intramolecularly attack and in a SN2 fashion you get this compound. Okay. This upon hydrolysis you get you have inverted the stereocenter here. Okay. So then you can follow the same process okay, or can follow the same process to get this intermediate. Once you have this intermediate then diacetization carbon insertion okay, and then enol ether formation and then thiol addition will give thionomycin. So standard you have the alcohol diacetization you introduce the nitrogen then treat with uh, dirhodium tetracetate to generate the carbene and that undergoes uh, intramolecular NH insertion and then followed by treatment with diphenyl phosphoryl chloride in the presence of Hunix base gives the enol phosphate and 1,4 addition followed by elimination and removal of this benzyl para nitro benzyl group gives thionomycin. So this they have done in a recipic method but this can be done in large quantity compared to the earlier, earlier method. To summarize, so what Max scientists have done is they have reported two total synthesis of thionomycin. The first one is an NSO specific one and the second one is a racemic synthesis. In both, both cases they have used intramolecular carbon insertion reaction as the key reaction to make the 5 membered ring. In the enantio specific synthesis they started with commercially available aspartic acid as the chiral amino acid so that they ended up with optically active thionomycin. In the second case that is a racemic one so they used intramolecular as well as intermolecular Mitsunobu reaction as one of the key reactions and overall yield also was much better compared to the first one. Nevertheless, the second method is a racemic one. Okay? So, thank you. I will stop here and I will talk about uh, one more total synthesis in this before we move to other natural products. Thank you. <laughs>